G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. Today I just want to do a video on, on battery health and I've got a couple of tests that I'm going to do. I've had this car for a year now. Uh, I've got the LFP battery. It's the, it was the first LFP battery to come out in the Model 3, so it's the 55 kilowatt hour battery. And I just got a few little tests I wanted to run just to see how, how the battery health is going and if I can do anything to upset that battery health. So I've got some supercharging kilometers I want to use up uh, because they're going to expire. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity to run this test and just supercharge only for two weeks. And not supercharged to 100%, only supercharged to between 80 and 90%. You know, never let it see that nice little topping charge that uh, balances out the voltage on all the cells. And I thought, well, um, th this could be one, one way possibly you could cause some issues with the battery. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be mistreating the battery. It's not topping it up to 100%. It's not letting it see a slow rate of charge. And I, I, I think in theory with an LFP battery, it should be more tolerant of this type of charging. So... With, with batteries, you know, you've got a lot of little cells in this, in this battery. I think there's, a hundred and, there's over 100 cells in this battery um, to, you know, 3 volt, three volt cells. That, these little cells that, you know, in, in a lot of batteries, the, you know, when you're charging at high rates of charge, each one of those cells accepts the charge at a different rate and you end up with a little bit of imbalance and you need that nice, every now and again, just to get a nice slow rate of charge in to sort of trickle and top off those, those cells that have got a slightly lower voltage. And that's what we mean by a, a balanced charge. A, a time to get, you know, uh, you know just, just, you know, be gentle with those cells and just, just top them up slowly and, and get that cell imbalance level between the lowest voltage cell and the highest voltage cell. Uh, keep that to a minimum. And that's ideal for a battery, you know, long life, it's ideal to keep that cell imbalance to a minimum. So the cells with lower voltage are going to work harder than the cells with the higher voltage. And that, that can cause some, some uneven, I guess you could call it wear, uh, some uneven load on those cells. So cell imbalance is, is something detrimental to battery life. So I just wanted to see uh, you know, where that cell imbalance is after two weeks. Now with an LFP battery, uh, with a lower internal resistance, they're going to be more tolerant of this type of charging. So the lower internal resistance means the electrons can flow a bit freer through the battery and you, you don't end up with that chokehold of the, the imbalance, so it shouldn't be as bad. And I wanted to run this test to, to either prove that or disprove that. And so we, we're just going to do that, that um, uh, what we're doing is just from, from 15, 20% and topping that up to between 80 and 90% and just for two weeks to see what happens. So I've, I've got a, a couple of long trips I need to do, uh, and, and then I've got a supercharger that's, that's basically halfway through on my you know, commute to work, so I can use that to top the car off. Um, so yeah, and I just wanna see where that cell imbalance goes. And then I also wanna have a look at, um, using Scan My Tesla to look at the, the uh, degradation on your battery. So we're going to have a bit of a look at that and a bit of a discussion on that because battery degradation is not a black and white topic. And I want to give you my opinion on that and, and where it sort of sits. And then we look at what, where my LFP battery is after a year uh, and 15,000 kilometers. I haven't done as many kilometers as I normally do because we had lockdowns here and, and I haven't been out uh, in, in regional areas visiting customers as often as I normally do. So I normally do about 30,000 kilometers a year. So I've done about half the kilometers. But 15,000 kilometers, one year, yeah, it's, it's a lithium battery. It's not immune to, to uh, degradation. It, it should just happen a lot slower with an LFP battery. So guys, let's get into this. Uh, we'll, we're gonna start with the, with the supercharging test. Uh, I've, I've got a drive, uh, doing a couple of charges there. And uh, we'll talk about charging too in general. And then um, we're gonna have a look at scan my Tesla and look at cell imbalance afterwards and then look at the degradation as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that at the end. Anyway, guys, enjoy the video and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. So I've run it down to, I'm at 15% at the moment. I'm about, I'm only about 10, 15 minutes from the nearest supercharger. 
So I've been preconditioning that time. I'm not preconditioning a lot. The battery's only at 21 degrees uh, and I don't expect it to be too much hotter uh, before I get there, but the battery inlet's at 50 degrees. So it's gonna heat up pretty quick. Uh, I'm not expecting fantastic speeds at the supercharger. You know, possibly, what's it telling me here? Max charge power, 85, 86. That's increasing as the temperature goes up. So, um, you know, it, it's gonna keep trying to heat the battery while I'm supercharging. So I've got to go in and do some, uh, get some breakfast and uh, do some supermarket shopping. And then I'll come back to the car. Uh, you've got to enter here through this valet parking entry. It can be difficult for people to find this one. Low clearance, just over two metres. So definitely you wouldn't be going through here with bikes on the roof, so you'd have to be pretty careful. Then you go in here through to the valet, through the valet boom gate. Take a ticket, it's not gonna cost you anything for the time it takes for you to, to valet park, of to um, park in the valet, go through here, uh, supercharge and um, go and do some shopping. But yeah, if you come here just to purely supercharge, it won't cost you anything. I think it's first three hours are free or something. So if you're supercharging for three hours, there's something majorly wrong. Let's try auto park. Auto park at the supercharger. Here we go. Shift to reverse. Start auto park. Let's see, which one are you going to take me to? Oh, you're going back down there. Once again, I'm glad there was no car there. <laughs> yeah, a bit off. See, it really struggles with this, this uh, perpendicular parking. That's oh, not too bad, not too bad. Eventually got there. Okay guys, I'm gonna go plug it in on charge and we'll have a quick look and see, uh, see what speeds we're gonna get. So battery's at 28.5 degrees, so still pretty cold for supercharging. It's telling me 85 kilowatts maximum. Uh, battery inlet's at 60 degrees. And um, let's just see how Let's see how it goes. I'll just go plug in. Basically, we've got two options. At, uh, this is a version two supercharger. Um, this is for the older Model S. As you can see, it's just a normal type two plug. Those that don't have the CCS pins. Um, and then we've got the type two CCS uh, one here. And you can see the two big DC pins on the bottom for, for the fast DC charging side. Then you just press the button on the back of the uh, connector plug it in and then you're done. Super easy. There's no RFID. There's no apps to, to worry about. You just plug your car in. It does the handshake and um, charges away. Battery's at 30.8 degrees. So in the 15 minutes or so it took me to get here, the battery heated up from 14 degrees to 31 degrees. So that was okay. Battery inlets at 48.5. Rear motors uh, kicked in trying to help heat the battery up and we're at 100 kilowatts. So not too bad. I'm at 14%. Oops, come back here. You can see 14%. Uh, we've already throttled down a little bit to 90 kilowatts. That's still 690 kilometers an hour. And we've already added one kilowatt. Saying 50 minutes here remaining, that's, that's to charge to 100%. Uh, we can charge the we can change the limit here. Let's see. Just so we wanted to charge to eighty percent, that'd be half an hour. 
So that's not too bad. Half an hour to get to 80% with a relatively cold LFP battery. That's pretty good, but you know, we've throttled back to 78 kilowatts now. So you can see that it tells you here, max, max charge power, 91 kilowatts. We're not getting that at the moment. Um, but the battery is heating up, so it should ramp up a bit. Um, outside temp is 15. All right, might just leave it there and uh, come back once I've done my shopping and we'll see where it's... Okay, we've been charging for 20 minutes and we're up to 71%. Uh, we have charge limit set. It says that I've got um, 25 minutes remaining. So we've got batteries at 48 degrees, uh, which is ideal. If I had have come here with 48 degrees, we would be gone by now. Um, Battery inlets at 29 points. Oh, it's ramping up again. I heard this. I heard the heat pump kick in, and must have a trigger to try and get the battery heat the battery back up again. So we're at what 68 kilowatts. Um, what I've found with this car, if you turn up cold uh, with a cold battery, it will heat it up, but yeah, it sort of will just hover around that 100 kilowatt, uh, kilowatt mark and not really, you know, just keep a pretty flat curve close to, to 100 kilowatts. And then once it gets to around the 70% mark, it throttles it back to about 70 kilowatts. So um, that's a bit of a penalty for arriving at the supercharger with a coolish battery. Even if it warms up, you're still going to suffer. It's, it's still not going to, it's like it it doesn't get that the battery's heated. I know it sounds silly, but it doesn't get that the battery's heated up and it just affects your whole charging curve. So the idea is to get here with a low state of charge and a warm battery and you'll make the most of, most of your charging speed. And ideally it's good to get to the superchargers with 20% left. <coughs> but guys, I'm, I'm not charging. What I've been doing, <coughs> I'm not charging to 100%. <coughs> either because that's going to give this car a lower state, a lower charging speed, which is going to help the battery balance a bit. I want to just go to 80% so that it's, it's not seeing that last slower part of the charging cycle. <coughs> and I'm at 75% now. I've really got to get out of here and get to work so I can get to work on time. We'll just have a really quick look at some battery stats. So we will go to battery and looking here, uh, what I want to show you is we can go down to, okay, cell imbalance is 10 millivolts. Now, uh, you know, we want to see that that is usually, yeah, it's on 12 now. That's not much. So, so far, just from a couple of, um, you know, these supercharging sessions over the last uh, week or so, it's really hasn't created much of a cell imbalance at all. With 12 millivolts, you're talking uh, hardly anything. So we can see that's not going to cause you any dramas. We can see 3.438 um, is, the, is the cell with the highest voltage, and then the lowest voltage is 3.428. So it's not much. You know, you'd want to see cell imbalances in the point, like 0.4, you'd want to see 0.3. And, you know, before you start thinking, you know, possibly that, that the load of those cells is being affected and they're being damaged. Really, the car is looking after itself. Um, it, it's not going to allow you to charge this car at too high a rate when it's cold. And it's going to protect that, protect the battery. So, um, 
you know, it really just depends how much of a rush you're in. So I'm already <coughs> already at 80 percent, pretty much at 80 percent now. Uh, it's still charging pretty quick, even at <coughs> 58 kilowatts. Um, we still we can still put 450 kilometres on in an hour at that. So <coughs> we're not not in bad shape. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to do a few more supercharging sessions and then uh, come back to you at the end of it, and we'll have a look at the cell imbalance at that point. All right, just a quick look. I've now finished my two weeks of fast charging or supercharging only. So what we might do is just have a look at the battery stats. Cell imbalance, four millivolts. So I was expecting after two weeks of just supercharging that the cell imbalance would be greater than that. That's a good, good thing. Uh, as opposed to the long-term um, issues, the supercharging <laughs> causes, you know, yeah, possibly uh, it could reduce the life, but I don't think it's going to be a significant reduction with this LFP battery. What I'll do is come back, I'll do a summary when the battery is fully charged back to 100%. Um, I will slow charge it back to 100% over the next day or so, and um, we'll have a look at where the imbalance is at that point, and we'll also have a look at where the degradation is according to scan my tesla we will look at the the estimated capacity back at 100 percent and see how it compares to the full pack when new and we'll go from there and have a look at that and we'll we'll do a summary of uh this test